Welcome. This is the 18th of May, 2023. It's documentation office hours. Topics we've got today, Kevin Martins is unavailable. April newsletter, transition from Java 11 to Java 17 in the documentation, Google Summer of Code. And then the other items, I think it's safe to just leave them in the list. They're, they're more to remind that we need to be sure we get them all the way to closure. Anything else that needs to be added? Uh, nothing comes to my mind. Thanks for asking. Okay. So first item, Kevin Kevin Martins is going to be unavailable until June 12th. He shared with the Jenkins board that he he's offline. And so we've got about another four weeks, three or four weeks where he won't be available. Um, the idea there was let's accept that the documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17 will be delayed and encourage others, Bruno, you, me, Alyssa, um, I've asked Meg McRoberts as well to review pull requests in his absence. And okay. I'll handle the change logs for the weeklies and the change log and upgrade guide for the upcoming LTS at the that happens May 31st. Okay. Any suggestions or guidance there that you want to change or recommend something different? <laughs> no, no, no. Thanks for asking. That's okay. All right. And thanks to you for publishing the April newsletter. Uh, uh, thanks to Kevin for correcting, uh, reviewing Alice also. It's a group work, but yeah, I'm happy. It's almost on time. <laughs> well done. Very good. The next topic is just to say that the documentation transition is delayed. We've got a ticket that if other contributors would like to contribute, here, are, here is a list from Kevin of the pages mm -hmm. that need to be visited. And he started an initial pull request for one of those steps, if someone would like to pick it up. Okay. Next topic was Google Summer of Code. So we're pleased to welcome Vandit Singh as working on the Jenkins documentation project to re rework the Jenkins.io website so that it supports multiple versions much the same way as, for instance, this site does. So here I can look at the documentation for the reference manual for, say, git config, and notice that up here at the top, there's a choice that lets me look at old documentation versions. Wow. We want something similar like that for the Jenkins documentation. Now, it certainly won't have this look and feel, but that's what Vandit is, is working on, is, is that kind of experience for Jenkins documentation. That will prove handy, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. right, exactly. Then Ashutosh Saxena is working on the Docker Quick Start project. Bruno, since that one's yours, anything you want to share there on, on how that's progressing, etc.? Um, it's not progressing that well for the time being because it was difficult to find a correct time slot for all of the mentors and Ashutosh. But we'll have our first meeting tomorrow, so hopefully we'll progress. We already have defined our communication channels, and I think we'll work on the plan tomorrow. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else you want to share on that one? Uh, no, <laughs> nothing to share. Okay. It's too early, I'm afraid. Right. So May, 20, May 28th, 10 days from now, we'll end the community bonding period and start phase one of the project development. That's great. Thanks. The last three items really are just status reports. There's no change on the, on the pipeline steps reference. It still works. Let's just prove it to be sure. Mm -hmm. So it works by going here, pipeline, the pipeline steps reference. If we search for checkout and we open it, it has the full content. Good. Cool. So still working. The, the test that's in the code uh, defends us against breaking changes. Uh, no time yet for anyone and probably not for a month or more for investigation of what actually broke that. And any question on that one, Bruno? No, Mark, thanks. Okay, so low risk, uh, low risk tests defend us from a breaking change.
Ah, okay. So other topics are idling until we get more traction. We just got another request on a community thread asking about support on CentOS 7. And the answer is, hey, we <laughs> intend to remove CentOS 7 support. The submitter said, oh, that's okay. We're going we're gonna to keep using it anyway. And here's the change that they did. But the reality is, we don't intend to continue supporting Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 and its derivatives for a long time. Yes, I saw this week on Community Jenkins IO, uh, somebody asking for help. It was using CentOS 7 and Docker and Jenkins. And I was trying to put the blame on CentOS 7, just in case. <laughs> right. Still well, managed to and, do it. No. And, and certainly, we, we've got lots of places where the Jenkins project actually uses CentOS 7 in not in its own, our own build process, but we will reference things from CentOS 7. Mm -hmm. And so we've got work to do to, to get it cleanly removed. But the sooner we start, the sooner it'll get done. Yep. All right. That's all that I had. Anything else, Bruno? No, Mark. Thanks. All right.